Hello and welcome to this lecture, which is an introduction to employee selection, otherwise known as organizational staffing. Selection is, in many ways, the most important thing a manager can ever do. Think about it. If you hire the wrong people, your company is not likely to be successful. Business is about people. People do the work. People run the firm. People buy the products. Human resource management is about people at work. This lecture series goes into great detail on how to engage in the scientific selection of people for work. Let's get started. So what is selection? Selection is, in an HR sense, the collection and evaluation of information in order to extend an employment offer. That is, selection is figuring out who to hire. The positions for which we select can be for a new employee joining the firm or for a different position for a current employee. In other words, we conduct selection in order to hire new people and to make promotions. Of course, selection has at least two sorts of constraints, legal and environmental. That is, there are laws that guide us on what we can legally do in a selection context. The environmental constraints include the environment in which a business operates and all sorts of ramifications associated with that. Selection is vital because without it, we cannot prepare for the future needs of an organization which revolves in many ways around people. People make the difference between one company and another. Finding, hiring, and promoting people is therefore one of the most vital functions that HR folks can engage in. Let's move on. Here we see the five basic human resource management functional areas. We tend to group recruitment with selection, but we think of training and development as a separate area. Compensation and benefits forms its own area. Safety and health are another. Lastly, employee and labor relations form the fifth area of HR. However, all, I repeat, all of these areas are linked together by a common underlying HR process, job analysis. Job analysis is the collection of information to form a formal report on what people actually do in their jobs. It's a scientific process designed to yield two related sets of information, a job description and a set of job specifications. A job description is the list of tasks and duties performed by a job incumbent. A job specification is a list of attributes that you are required to, perform, to have to perform the job. The specification list is a list of things that you must bring with you to the job and include experience, education, skills, knowledge, abilities, and other things. Let's move on. Let's take a closer look at HR recruitment. Recruitment is designed to increase the pool of applicants within reason. We usually can't afford to fly the top 100 candidates in from all over the world for a job as a janitor. We have to be aware of the environmental constraints of cost. Of course, recruitment must meet the firm's legal and social obligations regarding demography. We often see firms try and have a workforce that mimics the relevant labor market. We see firms try and have an equal number of men and women in as many positions in the firm as they can. There are laws regarding the demographics of a firm and the people that it recruits for possible hiring. Even though a firm may meet the letter of the law, it is also good PR or public relations to go beyond the letter of the law. Companies have a social obligation to the people on whom they depend for employees and customers and investors. A good recruitment program should increase the success rate of the selection process by identifying and eliminating the poorly qualified applicants and those who have the wrong knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics. These are usually referred to as KSAOs, knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics. Let's move on. Now, as I mentioned, a good selection program, like all good HR programs, starts with job analysis. This should yield a list of all relevant performance dimensions. For example, if we perform a job analysis of the position of restaurant cashier, we might see that they need cash handling experience, basic math skills, and a friendly personality. They might perform tasks like ringing up meals, taking cash, running credit cards, providing change, etc. 
These tasks are the things on which their performance will be later evaluated. We must identify the performance dimensions before we hire someone. Well, we've already identified the KSAOs, cash handling skills, basic math knowledge, friendly demeanor. Then we develop tests of these KSAOs. We might check their references to see if they actually do have cash handling experience and how good they were at it. We might give them a math test. We might give them a personality test to measure their friendliness. Next, we have to gather validity evidence. This evidence should be content related, construct related, and criterion related. We'll spend a whole chapter on validity, so I won't bore you with it here. Lastly, we'll administer these tests. Yes, checking a reference is a test. We score the reference and it becomes part of the selection decision. We score math tests and we score personality tests. Every interview, questionnaire, submission of an application or a resume, everything is a test. Throughout this course, we'll refer to tests sometimes as devices, questionnaires, scales, and a host of other names. In the selection world, anything used to make a selection decision is a test, and every bit of evidence that we collect on an applicant is scored. Let's move on. Of course, there are some constraints in the development of a selection program. There's limited information that we can collect on applicants. There are laws that prevent the gathering of certain information and many more laws that limit our ability to use such information in a selection decision. Also, measurement is not perfect. The measurement of jobs, as in job analysis, is not perfect. The measurement of human characteristics is an imperfect science. There are problems with measuring job performance, too. However, we'll spend a great deal of time this semester on measurement and how to do it better. Lastly, there are a host of factors affecting job performance that are outside the control of the employee. In an energy crisis, for example, gas guzzling automobile sales decline. Auto salesperson's job performance goes down if they sell that sort of car during a period of high gas prices. They cannot control prices and their performance suffers because of things outside their control. Let's move on. Here are some hot issues in selection. The nature of a job, any job, has changed over time. Jobs are no longer a strict, short, well-defined list of specific tasks and duties. The end of the job is here. Jobs change, and a strictly written job description is often too constraining on employers' needs to fill future demands. Therefore, job analysis should maybe be changed to work analysis. We should consider, reconsider, figuring out what each particular job does and instead figure out what can each job contribute to the success of the firm, even if the duties change from time to time. And they will change for all except the most moribund of industries. Another hot issue in selection is regarding small businesses. Many small businesses cannot afford to conduct job analysis, develop and validate selection tests, and scientifically perform performance evaluations. Validation takes expertise, and experts cost money, so it can be expensive for small firms to conduct their own validation studies. But there is a solution. They can use something called validity generalization, which relies on the statistics of a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis scientifically synthesizes dozens and sometimes hundreds of similar studies on similar tests and provides the so-called true score correlation between a particular selection test and job performance. I'll spend time on validity generalization at multiple points during the many of the next several video lectures. And it's a fascinating tool, but it's not for the statistically timid or faint of heart you have been warned. If the concept of validity, reliability, multiple regression, standardized scores, the standard error of measurement, cut scores, multiple hurdles, etc., all scare you, then you are free to go back to make bad decisions based upon intuition, hunches, tea leaves, and tarot cards. If you want to find out how the pros make selection decisions, then stick around. Modern selection processes have benefited greatly from applied statistics and measurement. If you can't measure it, then it probably is not useful in a selection decision.
employee selection is actually closer to rocket science than it is to voodoo. So strap in. You'll learn a lot. Let's move on. Well, thanks. That's all, folks.